Ladies and gentlemen, we have the champ, 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 triple champ, has he got the third championship this morning for the most beautiful, what do you call this beautiful beast? Mustache. Beautiful mustache. <laughs> So he, had, he just had a wonderful fight grappling match right now. You seem so calm, so relaxed out there, so at ease. When you started, when you started looking at your opponent, what were you thinking? Uh, you know, I've done this so many times already, and I've been fighting the best guys in the world all over the country. So uh, Jeff Martin was a, a step down from that. And even with the best guys in the world, I believe in myself so much that I knew I was going to win this fight. It was all about coming in here, staying relaxed, and doing my thing. Well, Javier Garcia, you were fighting a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. So when you were saying it was a step down, that talks about your skills when you say a Brazilian black belt is still a step down. So I know you're not trying to disrespect no one, but how powerful and how much belief do you have in yourself when you engage in any fight? Yeah, 100%. I, I know I'm one of the best in the world. I have, uh, I don't know if you guys saw my corner, but I had Eric Paulson in there. I had Chad George and a bunch of CMMA guys. And then a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu check my black belt. So I'm very well diverse. I know that, that he's a black belt and so am I, but there's levels to it. I, I believe I'm one of the best black belts in the world, especially when you add strikes. Correct, especially when you ask some strikes. Now, when you had full control of them, pretty much the whole time you were controlling them, riding them, what was your feeling when you were so relaxed and you had a lot of power? Your power was there compared to him, a lot more power. Right. How did that feel when you were controlling the man? Yeah, I mean, it felt, felt good. I, I, I practiced those positions every single day. So uh, they told us last minute, California changed the rules. They said that we weren't allowed to slap each other. Okay. But the, peop the people came here to see a show. So I got a couple of them in there, three or four pretty good ones. And then... Uh, and then I went for the choke. They told me they were going to stop the fight if I didn't stop smacking them. But you guys better believe that if, it, if they would have let me smack them, you guys would have seen a TKO. I think I, I got his face a little bit. He's like a little bit uh, bruised, but that was just from one of them. And uh, I didn't even let it go that hard because I knew if I concussed them or made his head go back, they would stop it. So stop I pulled the power a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was just out here to put on a show. I think we did. Good. Well, you did that. Everyone here was super happy. I was looking around. Everyone's eyes were light, lighting up. Everyone's off the seat. So you were a fan favorite down here in Southern California. So thank you so much for coming out here and performing. Now, once you sunk in that choke, talk about that choke. Once you we had it. And then you had, look, as a grappler, I recognize some stuff. You, you could have got it earlier, but you had to work a little bit slower. Give us a little bit of show, which I appreciate. Right. But talk about that choke. Yeah, so that choke, uh, I could feel it. And, and uh, I could feel his both of his carotid arteries. And I started applying the pressure slowly. I thought he was going to fight a little longer. And then he went to go tap, and I put it on a little bit just to, like, show him that I had a lot more. So right at the end, I, I turned it up a little bit. And I, think, I think he felt it. We were in the back talking a little bit. He told me that I, I'm really strong compared to a lot of the guys he's fought. And I hear that all the time, that I feel heavy and I'm really strong, especially for my size. Correct. Well, well we saw the heaviness on you. Cause you were drag literally dragging him around, which is very impressive. You're coming in at the same weight, but you're dragging him around. You got the little chimpanzee shape that I've got the same, the grappling around. Well, 100%. Why do you think you are so strong? Uh, a lifetime of grappling, a lot of kettlebells, uh, dedication, and then most of all, mostly, mostly, technique over power. So I used to be a, like a smaller kid and not as strong, so I had to learn the techniques very properly. And then later on in my career, I started adding strength training and everything else. So now I'm strong and technical, and I think it's a deadly combo. Gotcha. Now, what do you enjoy more? Do you enjoy more grappling or do you enjoy the full MMA? I enjoy the no rules of the con I enjoy being able to do whatever you, you have to do to get the win. Um, but if I had to pick between the two, I think grappling is a little more realistic. All the fights end up on the ground. And uh, combat jiu-jitsu is a really, really good mix between both because you get a little bit of both. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, for you as a Mexican, Mexican fighter, you carry that pride. We look at you with honor, pride. We look at you as someone that we want to be like. And thank God that you're out there for us representing us. How does it make you feel that all of us Mexicans look at you and respect you so much? Man, it's, uh, it's something that I'm still working towards. I, I don't I don't believe that I'm there yet, but I know I'm going to be there. And I'm just going to keep being a good example, keep showing that uh, what makes us special is like the hard work, the, the Mexican heart that, that we have. And uh, I, I want to be an example of that um, to the highest level, the world champion. And uh, that's what I'm here to do. Well, you know, one of our greatest examples they have is Julio Cesar Chavez. Now, I know you're reaching to be one of the best fighters ever and bringing this sport more to Mexico and more to Latin America. What makes you want to be continuously improving and be that example for us because that's what i see in you i see you can reach the pinnacle or the pinnacle in this world yeah it's just uh it's that american dream you know my, my parents brought me here uh they're both illegal immigrants from mexico they sacrificed everything to give us an opportunity to have a better life and uh everybody takes that their own way for me i want to just be the best example the best version of myself for fighting and uh i want to represent in, in a way that uh that i can make everybody happy and proud excellent now now what do you see your future going on right now after this fight where do you see yourself Right now, um, they're offering me multiple fights. They're offering me a fight here in UNF. I told UNF, let's let's take UNF to Mexico. Yeah. You know, let's go to TJ. Let's go to uh, Mexicali or something right across the border, and we'll pack that house out. And then if not, probably Arizona for the LFA title. 
So either way, I'm gonna defend one of these titles unless the UFC calls me, like right now. Yeah. You know, they. I mean, I don't have my phone on me right now, but I could have a missed call from Dana White. So, well, I'm just gonna be ready. I'm gonna go back to the gym on Monday, get right back to training. And uh, I took like two days off, three days off for this fight. So it was a nice little break and I'm ready to get back to work. How does it feel to be such a popular fighter, such a powerful fighter, such a powerful fighter, popular fighter, that the whole world is wanting you to come and fight for them? How does that feel as a man? Man, it feels so great. I, I thought about it so much. I, I built it in my head and it used to be like such a distant dream. And now that I'm starting to get a little bit of a taste of that, I just love it. So I want more. You are more excellent. Well, we're going to wait for a lot more coming from you. I'm a fan. I became a fan of you. I really admire the way you fight, the way you handle yourself, the way you represent our culture, not only Mexican, but American culture. So thank you so much. One of our favorite Mexican charros right now in the United States of all America. Thank you so much for being here, Javier. We appreciate you. I got a shirt for you too, brother. Oh, you do? Perfect. Yeah. Thank Let's you. Go. We'll be back.